God did a great work and a deep work in a lot of people's lives this past Sunday and there's so much warfare and there's so much uh, uh, stuff being exposed to, to, to that and when people come up off in this church, my God, that God is doing a deep work in a lot of people and sometimes we tend to forget that because uh, a person stumbled along the way, you know what I'm saying, that don't mean they ain't trying, that don't mean they ain't made no changes because I can go, I can just look at her and I can begin to just talk about all the changes in some of y'all lives, my God, majority of all y'all lives, my God, that I know that's been around this ministry any length of time, I know a little bit about your testimony, and God has been doing a great work in your life, my God, he has, my God, you don't look nothing like you did when you first came, you're much stronger, you're much healthier, believe it or not, my God, don't base, my God, your development, all your progress off of somebody else, don't base your development, all your progress by looking at somebody else, my God. Oh, my God, a lot of things that you was doing, you at least think about doing it before you do it now. There was a time we just did it and didn't think about doing it. I mean, well, the consequences is another answer. So, yeah, I made a lot of change, but I got uh, the spirit of the person hit me so cold. And I didn't know what it was, so I reached out to Pastor Champ, and I began to talk to Pastor. And as I was just praying throughout the day on my consecration, my God, God told me to do something, and I'm just transparent. God told me to put y'all back on the altar. I can't carry you. I'm watching my God where I begin to grieve because I also like Minister Tanya. Did I see Tanya here? Uh, Minister Tanya spoke last over there, 3434, that uh, God is getting ready to expose Jackie, and, and he done it. I've been praying for years that God showed me who's around me, what's around me, and he didn't show me over there, but he showed me when we transitioned over here. Uh, many that I thought was with us wasn't with us. Many that said they loved me and my family, my God uh, showed me that they really didn't, and it hurt me. It really hurt me. It really hurt because a lot of people that I'm just being real, y'all, and I feel good. But a lot of people say that I thought that I thought Shay was with me wasn't really with me. But I remember what I said. God showed me, revealed to me. And so all God did is honor my prayer. What am I trying to say? Don't forget what you ask God to do in your life. He might not do it the way you want him to do it, but when he do it, just 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 accept it. Come on, somebody. Oh, I got a good word for you this Sunday. I promise you, though, we got to learn how to be grateful for what remains, not what he took. I can't get nobody to serve me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's some, my God, that just amongst the crowd. But Jesus is doing a new work. Follow me, woman of God. He's pulling the disciples up out of the crowd. There's many amongst the crowd, even here tonight, that's not with us. They just wait for an opportunity for somebody else to call them and go to another church. I understand that's all part of what this thing is about. That's church. People change houses, daughter. All day long. It's like they, they change churches like they change the clubs. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. But I don't want to talk about that, Jackie, but I had to put the church back on the altar. I started carrying it because I got hurt, woman of God, because of people that the pastor, 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 first lady, first lady, first lady, uh, Madeline, Madeline, French, you know what I'm trying to say? They just, uh, so good to see you. You said you was going to bury your hurt. But many of them I thought was with me. What? That's just a transparent moment. Thank God y'all still hurt. Thank God you still here. Thank God you still here. And for those that still here, my God, come on, give yourself a hand. Amen. As I spoke encouragement to Amber and Christian, I said, don't worry about it. And thank you, Pastor Madeline, for catching me, my God. That uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all welcome. Some of them didn't stay because they didn't like they 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 they, they, they wanted the same old same old. When you get to the point where all you want is the same old, same old in life, welcome to your life. And many of you are not happy already with your life, but you still want the same old, same old. You're not even happy. Your, your spiritual life ain't even breaking no fulfillment, but you want to hold on to the same old, same old. And then complain about anything new. But then also complain about the same old, same old. You're complaining about the same old, same old. When God brings something new, you don't know how to receive it because you're used to the same old, same old because you're used to poverty and mediocrity. Uh, the thought of walking in the store and spend a thousand dollars on a suit, you, want, you don't even think about it like nothing. Like you don't even think you can. I didn't think I could until I started honoring God. Y'all missed that. The thought of walking into a store and paying a thousand dollars for a suit, you won't even think like that, but I do. Because I do. And that's not boasting. I'm trying to get you to understand. Raise your level of thinking. My God, God has the sky is the limit for you. God has the limit, and the sky is the limit for you. You can have what you want to have according to God's will. 
Y'all need to see and receive what the Spirit of God is saying. You can have it. You can have a beautiful home. You can have a beautiful marriage. You can have beautiful kids. You can do it. If you can see it, you can do it. That's just something that occurs in y'all. Ah, turn with me to the book of Galatians. I put them back on the altar so I'm back free. I think I'm flying again. I think I'm flying again. Yeah, y'all almost thought he had me. He had me for a moment, but uh, I took a licky, but I bounced back. Yeah, y'all ain't used to no pastor being real like that, but I am. Because that's how I get free. See, confess and get it up off of you. And then so for those that's in covenant with me, Antoinette will begin to pray, okay? The enemy tried to get my pastor, so I better pray a little bit more for my pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, see. People that's really with me, they'll sit, you listen to that, Keisha, and they'll fast and pray for me. Because, see, if you understand like I understood, some, some of y'all destiny is tied up in my loins like mine was in Bishop. So if I'm strong, it helps you be strong. If I'm broke down and defeated, mentally in myself, what am I going to give you? Pray for your man of God. Keep him built up. Keep my hands held up in the air. <laughs> oh, my God. God has called me to a great work. I'm not just dealing with y'all. I'm dealing with a whole lot of people who don't even go to the church or going off of Christ church. Oh, y'all just don't understand the mantle. Oh, I got a very unconditional calling on my life, baby. Oh, my God. I got the John the Baptist. My God, preach and prepare the way for my return. That's not a popular, my God. I'm not in here to entertain nobody. I'm in to help your soul. Oh, my God. I don't expect for us to have a thousand people. I expect for us to have a thousand disciples, my God. I don't need a thousand member church. I need a thousand disciples. Everybody want to hear, yeah. Turn with me to the book of Galatians, chapter 5. Give me some disciples. Yes, Lord. Disciples walk Christ. Yeah, I want some people that can make a devil get on the run. Feel good, though. That just gave me an opportunity to torment the devil. He thought he had me. He thought I was going to sit up here and suffer in silence, Jackie. But I just came out <laughs> and cut his head off. He mad at me, so, so I got to be ready. I got to keep my head on the swivel now because he cut. I got to stay on the swivel now, y'all. Somebody do me a favor and turn around with me. That was more about yours than it was mine. Everybody need God to turn something around in your life. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse number 16. When you have it, say Amen. It says, so I say, I say, new living, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature, church, wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces, oh my God, notice the scripture said forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are, oh my God, directed by the spirit, in other words, guided by the spirit, led by the spirit, instructed by the spirit, you are not under obligations to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results, church, are very, very clear. Okay, now it's time for us to do a self-examination while we're standing. This is the signs of us that's following the sinful nature. There will be sexual immorality. Why did Paul put that first? Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures idolatry that's anything that you love and worship more than God is considered an idol oh my God sorcery hostility crawling jealousy outburst of anger selfish ambition dissensions division envy drunkenness and wild parties and all other sins like these let me tell you again here come the command let me tell you again as I have before Paul is talking to the Galatian church church not to unsaved people y'all to the church that any Christian among you living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God but the Holy Spirit produces the kind of fruit in our lives called love joy peace patience, kindness goodness faithfulness 
gentleness, self There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of the sinful nature to his cross. Oh, that sounds like an encounter right there. And crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit going off of Christ church and those online, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke, my God, one another, or be jealous of one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, thank you for the beloved saints of God. Thank you, Lord, that I get to pastor such beautiful people. Thank you for all those that's listening by way of social media, Father God. Speak to them. Bless them. Set somebody free. Save somebody's soul, Father God. Let someone call in or write in, Father God, how the message has spoke and how they have given their life to Christ, Father God, and how they want to be a part, Father God. Oh, my God, of the kingdom, Lord, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Jesus spoke of there being two possible pathways mm-hmm. through this life. Write down Matthew. Y'all don't mind if I give some scripture tonight. Is that okay? Let's look at Matthew chapter 7. I'm still in my introduction, but now Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. It says, for the sake of time, Jesus speaking, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. Now, if you, and I'm being serious now. It didn't say you can enter. It said you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and the gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway church to life is very narrow. Lord, have mercy. And the road is difficult and only a few shall find it. Now, Jesus says that the road is difficult. The Bible says, Paul warns us that all those, that's us, that desire to live godly shall suffer a level of persecution. See what I'm trying to say? When you're trying to line your life up according to, my God, kingdom structure, kingdom order, kingdom rule, when you're trying to let the spirit of the living God govern your life, my God, you will be considered strange. When you try to live holy, when you strive to live right, when you don't render evil for evil, when you pray for your sister and brother instead of talk about your sister and brother, see, that's foreign to churchgoers. Because, see, in church, you talk about your sister and your brother. You justify, my God. God know your heart, girl. It's okay. God going to forgive you, man. She'll die. Look at her. She's stacked. And so you go ahead and do the things. But my God, when you're held accountable according to the kingdom way, and you say, hold up, brother. You out of order. Hold up, sister. Uh, how you going to talk about her like that when you were just in her face the other day? See, that, that's, that's kingdom people holding kingdom people accountable. My God. But people that used to go to church and that's being dominated by the flesh, they don't want to be held accountable. They just want to come to church, clear their mind, and then go on about their business in front on Facebook like they're going hard for Christ. So Jesus admonishes the people of God. He said, the narrow way to the kingdom is the narrow way. The road that leads to all this mess is broad. And he said, there's few people that walk on this narrow way. There's many people, the crowd, that's on the road that leads to death. That's what it is, eternal death. And there's a lot of people in the church as well as outside the church that's on their way to their place. And they don't have to go there because Jesus made a way. Right. He wished that all come to repentance. He don't wish that no man perish. God don't send nobody to that burning place. We make a choice. As I told y'all, we get to make the choice, but you don't get to dictate and control the consequences of the choice. Somebody need to catch that right there. You make the choice, but you don't get to dictate to God what type of consequence you're going to get from your choice. Mm, that's why we got to count up the cost. And so Jesus said there's only two ways. He said there is one pathway that leads to life and the other that leads to death. While we have literally passed from death to life, the Bible says a, de a dead, ineffective, and fruitless spiritual life will always be the result of walking the wrong pathway. Listen to my verbiage. Ineffective, fruitless. We come to church. We read our Bible, let me encourage us, but we just don't seem to have no vibrant aura about it. We just don't seem to be excited. 
how we can get excited about the old school thing down on Guthrie, wherever they had that thing. Yeah, everybody was out there talking about that. But uh, Chris, why you don't put all that out there about God? You got videos of everybody out there doing all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? But I don't see nothing about God. Uh, we excited about the wrong thing, Christians. Uh, oh, my God, we promote the wrong thing, Christians. Uh, we blast social media about the wrong thing, my God. But why come we can't be just excited about God? Oh, my God, uh, why come we can't be passionate like this pastor is about God? Why come you can't be excited? Why come you can't scream and shout? Why come you can't just run around? Why come you can't just lay out in God? What you tell yourself, it don't take all that. My God, you act dignified in the house of the Lord, but you act like a heathen when you go to the club. So you're excited about the flesh and not excited about the spirit. How can you go hard in that life and then come up in here and act all cool, act like you don't take all that? But then you be somewhere else, you be doing all this and showing all that. Why come you can't get excited about God? And so the flesh will call you to be ineffective. I'm trying to help you because a lot of us are not happy about being Christians. That's why it's such a pull on the world to go back. That's why we're torn between two opinions. That's why, the, uh, that's why Sodom and Gomorrah look better than freedom. Because we ain't set free like we act like we are. I talk like we are. Oh, let me get up in there. I just feel like encouraging. I'm finna torment the devil because he tried to torment me. When the enemy strike, we strike back. I said when the enemy strike, we strike back, baby. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I don't want you, and neither do Paul want you, to live an ineffective and fruitless life. If your life seems dry, if when you read the Bible, you get no revelation, and you be like, oh, I got to read, oh, I got to pray. Uh, and it's always like that. Something is wrong, sisters and brothers. I understand we have our hiccups. I understand we have our times. We're not going to always be on 10. Sometimes we may come off a 10 and come down to about a 5, and that's okay. But sooner or later, if you're staying at a 5 and then you drop it to a 4, you drop it to a 3, you're dying. And now you look up, my God, you went from reading every day. Now you read every other day. And then now you read every three, four times a day. I mean, three, four times a week. Now you ain't reading number once a week. And now you read every month. Process of dying. And that will cause you and I to have an ineffective and a fruitless life. But when you walk in the spirit, you will be fruitful and effective. It's a real simplistic word. Two options. When you walk in the flesh, you're ineffective. When you walk in the spirit, you live an effective life. And you'll be fruitful. The Bible says in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 1 through 5, the revelation that I got, God prunes the branches that is fruitful. He prunes. He gets his sears out, his scissors out, and he cut the branches that is fruitful, not those that's unfruitful. He burns those that's unfruitful, but he clips and prunes for the well-being of something being more fruitful, those that are fruitful. fruitful. So if I'm going to be more fruitful, God got to cut on me. God got to squeeze me. God got to put me in tight places. God got to allow me to experience some things because he's trying to kill the flesh. He's trying to prepare me, my God, to boom, to be effective, to, 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 to have an aroma about myself. And so ask yourself, my God, is my life effective? Am I fruitless or am I fruitful? Do I got joy? Do I, do, do I get happy when I see my brothers and sisters get happy? Uh, uh, when I'm not in the midst of the congregation, my God, what am I talking about? And who am I talking about? Come on. Uh, he gives an extinction. He tells us elementary that you would know that if you're walking in the flesh and you know if you're walking in the spirit by these things right here. So he admonishes us to do a self-evaluation. That's all. My God. There's only, put the title up there for me, woman of God. There's only two. That's only two. I just read it to you. Which one are you on? Bishop Hurl Wayne Jones, senior pastor of Full Gospel Church, always said, he caught it early on, I caught it early on when I came home. He said, don't go back to hell by way of the church. You mean tell me you saying that on the pulpit? Yes, don't go to hell by way of the church. I mean, sitting in church playing and knowing you're not saved and knowing you're not striving to be saved. You're doing church and you're not doing Christ. I'm sorry, I love you. But don't go to hell by way of sitting in the church playing. Don't let nobody pull you off the pathway that leads to eternal life. Don't let no python, no, don't let no contaminated voice, my God. Don't let people's perception pull you off the pathway that leads to eternal life. See what I'm trying to say? Don't let the enemy trick you. Paul said in the Galatians, you was running a good race. 
How did you allow yourself to get back yoked and back, back in bondage to the up under the law? You got delivered from the law. Now you back entangled with the law. You was running. You was free. You was walking in the spirit. You was serving in the spirit. You was reading in the spirit. You was loving in the spirit. Now you let people, my God, bring you back under the law. Now you back in bondage when you was free. So God has delivered you from a lot of stuff, you and I. And so therefore, we have been walking with God for quite some time. My God, now you look back, the things that he delivered us from, delivered us from, now we back entangled with it again. Right. See what I'm trying to say? You was running a good race. What happened? What happened, saints? What happened, those that's online? You was running. You was free. He took the shackles off. He unlocked it. You was free. How did you get back in bondage? You know how? Because we stopped trying to follow the second Adam and we got back entangled with the first Adam. First Adam sin in the garden. The second Adam is Jesus. Oh my God, I teach my sons and daughters, my God, you got to pattern your life after the second Adam. And the second Adam strived for perfection. The second Adam, my God, my God, sought the sword. The second Adam walked in dominion. The second Adam, my God, caused people that was blind to see. Come on, somebody, people that was dead to come back to life, my God. You got to walk in your authority and your power, my God. You got the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you, baby. You got the power to walk like Christ, talk like Christ. Oh, my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. God gave you dominion, baby, over the earth, my God. You supposed to own it. It can't own you. Walk after the second Adam. But when we get entangled again, we get pulled back into the first Adam. Uh, how, how can you be a drug addict and you claim to be Christ? A Christian. The devil is a liar out of order. That's following the first Adam. Oh, my God. When God gave you dominion over that. He said, whom the son set free. is free. You're already free. Make a decision to stay free. Quit letting people pull you back into bondage. Quit getting entangled, my God, with the yoke of sin and bondage again, church. It's killing the, it's killing the body of Christ everywhere. Oh, I know I'm in there. It's only two ways. Which one are you on? It's only two ways. He's simplified. It's either life or death. It's either narrow or broad. It's either right or not right. It's either light or darkness. It's either truth or not truth. It's just two ways. It's just true. Like I teach our sin, follow sin. Sin don't want to be on the straight and narrow. No, 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 no. Their sin want to cover up with fig leaves. They bit from the tree and they use the tree to cover and hide. So the very thing that they caught that they sin with, they use to try to cover up with. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah. They gotta stay with me, man. There's only two ways. Let's look at pathway. Write this down. Pathway is a course of action. A course of action. What course are you on? When you run a track, there's a, there's, you got to stay within the boundaries. Even though you may win, but if you crossed over into the other lane, you are disqualified. Uh, you can't be on the straight and narrow on Sunday and then on the broad road on Monday. Uh, you can't be crossing over on Wednesday, my God, and be on the straight and narrow, and then you want to go to the broad road on Thursday. Come on. Uh, you can't try to clean your life up on Saturday, my, uh, uh, and then you want to come to church on Sunday. Keep coming, though. Let me be careful. Keep coming. Keep working it out. But don't be the type of person that on Sunday you're going to get on the straight and narrow, but on Monday you're going to choose to do what you want to do. And then you're going to get it back right on Tuesday because you know you got to go to Bible study on Wednesday. And so you try to get back on the narrow, but then on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you're going to walk on the broad road. That caused you to be ineffective and fruitless. It's the only two ways. Somebody do like this. Somebody do like this again. Now, I say, I have to be careful because of those online, they're going to be like, Pastor, up there set tripping. <laughs> See, yeah, they, uh, he up there throwing up game signs. They, they sure want to crucify me. Yeah, I'm being serious. There ain't anything they can get on you. That's why you got to be careful. I was just teaching one of my daughters, your, your reputation matters. God compares your reputation to gold. He said a reputation is a good reputation. Listen to me. It's more to be desired than gold and silver. Uh, Solomon compares you and I's reputation to money. He says put your reputation above money. You can spin up the money, but you cannot live your reputation. Ah, oh my God. You can have a million dollars sitting in the bank. It's about a year, but, you, but, but people are like, I don't fool with him. You can't trust him. He's a crook. Yeah. How did he get his million? A reputation. Let your reputation supersede, my God, anything in life. You might not have no money, but if you got a good reputation, somebody want to mess with you. Somebody want to put something in your hand. Oh, my God. God, you got favor when you got a good reputation. You got a good name? Yeah. You got a good name? Yeah. It means everything. So put point number one on there. Let's look at that. 
As I said, pathway is a course of action. Also to a route to be taken. There's a route. Oh, my God, when God detour you off the route, that's okay. My God, God got a route for every last one of us to take. He got a pathway. He got a course for you and I to take. It's only two ways. Let me say that again. It's only two ways. Let that ring in your hearing. When you out on Tuesday, just uh, you want to make a decision, say it's only two ways. Some of y'all tell me, boy, Pastor, I'll be getting ready to do stuff. I can just hear your voice. Good. I get it all the time. Pastor, I'll be getting ready. <laughs> Come on. Good. You need to hear God's voice through me. It's only two ways. Remember that. So this decision that you're about to make, when you leave her or tomorrow, or you face with an opportunity or a challenge, ask yourself, is it going to lead to up or is it going to lead to down? It's real simple. Don't make your life hard. Every decision is going to lead up. It's going to either add or it's going to take away from you. It's going to either increase you or it's going to cause you to lose something. Oh, my God. But every decision, you got to pay a price for it. Go back and listen to it online. You'll catch that. Every decision, you got to pay a price for it. It's going to take you up or it's gonna, you're going to lose something. That's heavy right there, Alvin. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So point number one, the pathway to spiritual disaster. Let's look at this right quick. Lord have mercy. The pathway to spiritual disaster. My God, up under point number one, right, the flesh is always against the spirit. Write that down. The flesh is opposed to the spirit. There's a warfare going on in your life, according to Romans, and I'm not going to do it for the sake of time. Romans, write down Romans chapter 7, 15 to 25. Romans 7, 15. That's when Paul said, my God, I'm in a war. Whenever I want to go do good, evil is always present. That what I don't want to do, that's what I find myself doing. Uh, he said, I try to do right. My God, here's the, the man that wrote over half, excuse me, over half of the New Testament. He's in a war. He said, I want to do right. Every time I go to do right, I'm end up doing something wrong. Come on, somebody. He said, I'm in a war. My God, I promise you, can I help you with this? Uh, you're in a dangerous place. And those that's looking online, let me say this to you. You're in a dangerous place if you never feel no war going on between your flesh and your spirit. I'm going to say that again to those that's in the audience and those that's looking at me online. If you are a Christian and you are not feeling some type of struggle, some type of war, my God, you're in a dangerous place. Because there's there's going to always be opposition, flesh and spirit. Light and darkness, right and wrong. You should always be faced with a decision. Am, am I on the narrow or I'm on the broad? Which one is it? There should always be some type of tug of war, some type of struggle. Oh, my God, going on, my God. Some people tell you, you shouldn't always be struggling as a Christian. The devil is a lie. If you're putting your flesh to death and you crucifying your flesh, my God, it's making your flesh angry and it's making the devil angry. And he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. People, I heard Pat say, you shouldn't always be struggling. The devil is lying. I'm not, I ain't talking about struggling. I'm talking about battling between the flesh. Should I do it or should I not do it? Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, my God. Is this the right decision? I know he wronged me, my God. I want to get evil with evil, but I ain't going to do that right now. I know he talked about me. I'm ready to jump out and set it up. But you better ask somebody. Uh, you know, see, that's what I'm talking about. But see, that's always that type of struggle and war going on. If you're not battling within, something is wrong. Amen. If there's not some type of battle going in, that means you're not pushing. You're not pressing. You're just settling, my God. Oh, my God, you're not allowing the Spirit of the living God to dig with your root system. Because all of us got roots that's underground. Oh, my God, so if the Spirit of God ain't dealing with your root system, my God, oh, you're in a bad place. Because if the Spirit of God is touching your root system, if God is touching those areas, my God, we've been abandoned at, we've been violated at, we've been mishandled at, my God, with somebody that abandoned us and talked against us and forgive, and it caused us to be in unforgiveness and stuff, that stuff right there causes us. I don't want to forgive him. I don't want to forgive her. They made me mad. They shouldn't have said that about me. You constantly in the war. My God. Don't let nobody tell you you shouldn't be banging. Yeah, you should be. And whichever one you bang with, my God, whichever one's the strongest is the one you're going to give in to. If your flesh is strong in your spirit, welcome to your battle. The flesh going to always win. You're going to find yourself doing the things that you don't want to do. Even though you know what you should do, you don't do it. Flesh too strong. There's only two ways. There's only two ways. Some people lost tonight. They could have came to church, but they flesh won. Now, if they had a legit reason, then, they, then, then that's okay. But those that didn't, they, they, they let their flesh win. Uh, it's raining. I go next week. Like, they know they got next week. That's a dangerous place to be in because, see, many of us think like that. That's why and some of y'all have adopted my saying, like I always say, if it be thy will. Because you don't know. I don't know what the future holds. God preached a cold-blooded word uh, uh, Sunday, and I found myself down here, my God, Shemaine, depressed. I had to call pastor to get some strength. 
You don't know what, my God, there's a war going on. And if you're effective, he definitely coming. He ain't worried about you if you're ineffective. He ain't worried about you if you're just doing church and quote scripture. If you ain't got no power and you ain't got your heart and your mind fixed on peace of God, he ain't worried about you. If you ain't praying, if you ain't pushing, if you ain't studying, if you ain't making a difference, he ain't worried about you. I'm preaching with a little passion because I want you to get it. There's only two ways. Which one are you on? Don't let the church trick you off. And don't let people in church trick you off. And there's a lot of people getting tricked off because they think they're straight. But God sees all. Shall a man rob God? We're not just talking about finance. You can't rob God of worship. You can't rob God of flipping them pages. You can't rob God, my God, of spending time with him and think that you're going to be effective and powerful. I'm trying to build a church up, baby. So you can be effective to go outside and torment the devil instead of him tormenting you. I just get an opportunity to torment him because he tried to torment me. I couldn't wait to get to the house of the Lord. Uh, some of y'all and the devil run up and down your back, you stay home. Instead of saying, I'm getting to the church, I'm going to get to Matter of fact, I ain't waiting to church. I'm going to start it now. I'm going to set it off in the car. I'm going to set it off in my kitchen. Oh, I'm cooking dinner for my kid. I'm going to put my open on. I'm going to go to war. I'm going to get me a knife and walk around my kitchen and say, I'll cut you. You better, have, you, you better ask somebody, Satan. You better back up off me. Quit letting the enemy just do you any kind of way. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. He radical. Yes, Lord. I'm trying to torment the devil. Somebody give God a hand that's a real way. Amen, son. Amen. I like that one right there, Christian. That young kid stood up and said, yes. Yeah, somebody's feeling this right here. My God. Oh, my God. But the flesh, write this down. The flesh want to hinder you. If you're not praying, you're in trouble. If you're not studying, you're in trouble. If you're not witnessing, you're in trouble. Because after God do something for you, you are commissioned by the Spirit to go testify. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So, my God, so you know what? Wherever God has delivered you at, watch this, watch this, Emma and Christian, watch that. Well, what, whatever God has delivered you from, you testify about that. And this over here that you're still working out, you work it out, but you testify about this right here. So, if you ain't doing what you used to do, tell somebody right here. Quit thinking you got to be squeaky clean, my God, to testify. The devil is a lie. Use your weapon, my God, to torment the devil. If you're no longer cussing, then tell somebody, I don't cuss no more. I'm sorry. Flesh is opposed to your prayer. It opposes your prayer life, study life, witness life. You, you won't be faithful when you're walking in the flesh. You won't be obedient. The Bible says, I was praying with Pastor Shepherd about the word of God says obedience is better than a sacrifice. You come to church, that's a sacrifice, but are you being obedient after you leave the church? That's what God blesses you at in your obedience. Not that you came to church. God honors your sacrifice. Let me be spiritual and let me be pastoral. He honors your sacrifice. Oh, my God, but he supernaturally blesses you when you walk in obedience. Yeah. That's when the heavens and the favor come. Yeah, you, yeah church, amen, I ain't you saying. Oh, my God, but you want to see the heavens part? Ooh, then the Red Sea open, walk in obedience. And then you can go buy them $1,000 shoes that I was just, mm. yeah, yeah, God will bless you financially. I'm sorry. Oh, it ain't it good, Sharon? See, some of them, they can't, uh, I ain't going to apologize. I sold mine. I sold mine. I, 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 thank Thank you, Lord, for just giving me an opportunity to be a witness for you. To show the people of God, Lord, that you can do anything through a yielded vessel. Somebody that got a real yes. Somebody that's determined, my God, to see what the end of a saved life is going to be like. My God. Everything that I do, Father God, is all for your glory. Thank you, Lord. Mm. That was for me. That was for me because, see, I'm not going to let y'all rob me of what God has done in my life. And for those that has walked with me, y'all know y'all pastor come through hell, baby. I didn't pay a hell of a price to be standing up here. I paid every single day. Oh, my God. Don't let nobody rob you an opportunity to give God no glory. Somebody stand up and give God some glory. Oh, my God. Let's go a little deeper. So, my God, if you're not praying and if you're not reading, uh, the flesh may be winning, okay? Let me say that. Black pastor, please leave me alone. Uh, I know I should be reading. I'm going to leave you alone. Uh, the flesh is open to any sin. Write that down. We'll do anything. Notice I said we, Jackie. I didn't say y'all. I said we. Boy, if that flesh, my God, is strong, then even we would act a plum fool. Yes, we will. This is real, solid teaching to build the body of Christ up. This is what this is. There's only two ways. 
Our flesh will make us do things that we were like, Lord, why and how did I do that? I was running a good race. How did I let him in? How did I let him? Why did I do that? My God, I took my whole check and went to the casino. Not me, I'm just telling you. And now I'm broke. And now I'm broke. And you ask yourself, how did I do See, you, you made a choice to go to the casino because you're trying to hit. To come up, and but yet you got now you got to deal with the consequences. You didn't spend all your money, and now you got to now you got to sit uh, uh, come to the church for a hardship. I'm not honoring that. I'm a tither. We can talk about it. That's one of the first. I, I'm being serious because see we do that type of stuff, and then we want God to reward our foolishness. Uh, we want the church. Uh, I go to their church. They didn't help me. So then, uh, you know, you know, then they leave and talk about the church. But you ain't told nobody that you took all your money. You ain't been paying your tithes. And you're up there trying to get rich, my God. And now you broke, my God. And now you want the church to cover your sin. I preach the truth, baby. But they won't tell that. They didn't help me. I've been going to church. I've been swept and cleaned and mopped and all that. Well, tell the truth. Tell the truth. I don't mind being a blessing to you. But don't lie. Don't try to cover, uncover to recover. Don't try to get on Facebook and cover up when you know you need to be uncovered and tell the truth. Y'all got to realize that there's people online looking, so I got to get them too. I'm trying to pastor everything up in her and that what is online. I remember what you told me. I'm a seed planter. I got to get all mine. Everything belong to God, I want it. I wish you get like that. Everything that belongs to you, you should want it. Satan, give it back to me. I'm going to recover everything. David, go all you. I want it all. I want my peace. I want my strength. I want my love. I want my marriage. I want my children. I want my grandchildren. I want my grandchildren. I got my, I'm going to recover all. Give it all back. My God. Yeah, come on. Give it all back. So just remember, just remember, just remember, let me watch, just remember that if the flesh is winning, we'll do anything. Okay, let me do this quickly, I'm going to move. As I told y'all, this is the bottom, this is the top, which as you know that, this is 10, this is 1. If my flesh is up here, that means it's in total control. It means that my flesh and all those sins that Paul talks about, is leading me, is my master. So in order for your flesh to come down off the throne, you got to fast, you got to pray, you got to tell yourself no, you got to cry. This is like a junkie trying to overcome a, 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 a drug addiction. They toss it and turn it because you're trying to kill your flesh because your flesh want to stay on top. And so therefore, now you got to say you got to die. You got to die. You got to die. You got to come down off the throne. A lot of us can't have no victory because the flesh is on the throne. If God promotes you and bless you at the level that he desires to bless all of us, my God, your flesh going to mess it up. Most people can't handle a platform. Right. Most people can't handle success. Most people can't handle money. Mm-hmm. They get it and they start worshiping it instead of worshiping the creator of it. That's right. When God bless you, it should, it should increase your love. It should increase your tenacity. I started with nothing, my God, and my heart ain't shifted in 25 years. It ain't shifted. All it did is make me fall more and more in love with him. When God do it for you, are you loving him or are you following him from a distance? When you were struggling, my God, you went hard. Now that God has blessed you, now he look at you making excuses. The flesh is on top. My God, you got to get that flesh up off of this here. The flesh is on the top. You got to bring that flesh back down here, baby. Get down. That means you got to go to war. Even when you want to, you be like, I can't. Everything ain't permissible. Everything ain't beneficial. If your flesh is on top, you're in trouble. There's only two ways. I want y'all to get it, baby, because I love you. That is killing the people of God everywhere. Everywhere. The crowd don't mean that they're powerful. You'll know where you're at when the crowd ain't around and when the flesh act up and you crucify it, you lead it, you tell it what to do instead of it telling you what to do. That's when you know you're getting strong. When you're telling your flesh what to do instead of your flesh telling you what to do. Don't get caught up in the crowd. Jesus snatched the 12 up at the crowd. The real strength was in the 12. It wasn't in the crowd. The crowd followed because of the signs, miracles, and wonders. The 12 followed because of who he is. Why are you following him? For what he can do or are you following for who he is? Go a little deeper. The flesh is ordained to judgment. Write that down. 
to prevent us from getting the wrong idea. The flesh, it should be on the screen, is ordained to judgment. Thank you, daughter. It's ordained to judgment. My God, God is not saying that a slip up in any area will prevent us from getting to heaven. That's not what I'm saying either. The verb do in this scripture in Galatians is in this verse indicates an ongoing lifestyle. See, see we can't have an ongoing lifestyle, y'all. That's called habitual. David said, Lord, don't let me be a willful sinner. Think about the scripture, willful sinner. That means I make a conscious decision to do what I'm doing. And I have no remorse. I have no conviction about it. I preach the gospel, but I go home and turn on the, the computer and look at that stuff. Willful. I preach to the masses and tell them that they got to rise above their flesh. And then I go home and submit and give over to the flesh. Right. I tell somebody, all my, give my people all these scriptures on Facebook, and then, I, when, and then when I'm at home, I'm not doing what I just said on <laughs> Willful. Right. Why do I use social media? Because social media has crippled the body of Christ. Because yeah. you could be anything on social media. Yeah. Most people are attacking the church. They attack the church, they leave, but they don't tell the people why they left. That's but right. they try to make the church look bad. Yeah. Guess who the church is? It ain't the building. It's y'all. Uh-huh. You should have a problem with somebody lying on you. And that don't mean go on social media and start acting crazy. Now you just ruin your witness. Watch what I'm saying. Now if you had a flesh, it's pulled you into something. Now both of y'all is making mockery of the king. Something you just leave it alone. Anything you feed will live. Don't feed the stuff on Facebook. And if, this, if, if they saying something and it's truthful, then stop doing it. Because as I taught y'all, exposure is not bad. Exposure is good to a person that's really trying to live right. You and I, I and you need to be exposed. God exposed it because he wants us to get rid of it. Because when he's taking you and when he's taking me, that can't go. And so God will expose it down here. Stay with me. He'll expose it down here because if you get up here, it's going to really hurt more people. So he got allowed to be killed. See, I can get away with it now down here because they're only going to hurt Sharon the champ. But if I get up here, now I got 250 people in a church that I didn't hurt it. And everybody that's connected to y'all. So it's thousands of people going to be infect, infected in a negative way behind one choice. That's why God got to crucify this stuff on this level. So when you get to this level, my God, you'll be okay. That's why you got to develop discipline, my God, while you have an opportunity to. Yes. Develop good habits while you have an opportunity to. Read, get in the habit of reading your Bible while you have an opportunity yes. to. Because the more responsibility you got, my God, the more the, more, the, more the responsibility going to pull on you and keep you from reading your word. When you got a lot of responsibility, you got a whole lot of stuff that's going to try to keep you from praying and reading. That's where you got to crucify your flesh. Paul said, I train myself. I train my body to do what it should, not what it wants to. So you got to get to the point where you train your body, where you tell your body, you're going to obey me. Uh, you're not going to eat that cheesecake. You're not going to eat them cookies. I can't get Sharon, you better, don't buy them no more. I can't get them. Each <laughs> chef said, don't do that. Don't do that, pal. Don't do that. Uh, I can't keep eating all that steak. I can't. Uh, why, so, 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 who, who is, is you training yourself? Is the flesh training you or are you training it? See, your flesh ain't going to stop. I don't care how much Bible you read. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I don't care how much we pray. The flesh ain't going nowhere. Brenda, he's coming. I'm praying. I'm fasting. 40 day fast. So you get through. Now he tempted you to eat something. He ain't stopping. The flesh ain't stopping. In your mind, it ain't stopping. Every time you're trying to focus, my God, distractions come. It never stopped. The flesh is always barking. The flesh is always talking. The flesh is always craving. The flesh is always interrupting. My God, peace is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It never stopped. It's a war. Yeah. That's why you got to get in his presence. That's why you got to get in his presence. That's why you got to get in his presence. There's only two ways. There's only two ways. There's only two ways. One going to lead up. One going to lead down. Period. Don't let. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Write this down. Y'all heard me say it, though, but write it down. Emotionalism will cost you. A lot of people's food because a lot of noise don't mean it's a lot of spirit. Emotionalism will cost you your soul. People are being be, betwixt, as Scripture says in Galatians. Food, be, they're being hexed, thank you, Holy Ghost, behind a lot of noise. That's why it's very dangerous to have a whole lot of entertainment on Sundays. Most people go into church to be entertained. They're not to come in and encounter Christ. That's real. Y'all need to stay with me, church. Most people are coming to church all over the nation to be entertained. 
They're not coming because they're hungry for truth. They're hungry for deliverance. Not all, some. They're, not, they're hungry for revelation. They need a healing. I need to encounter this God y'all talking about. I want to be effective. My God, I want a fruitful life. I'm coming because I love God. Oh, my God, I don't need nothing. Just, I just want to get to God. I just want to worship God. I'm just thankful to be delivered. I'm just thankful to be free. My God, people ain't coming like that no more. They're coming for the signs, miracles, and wonders. And if they ain't got them, they're going somewhere else. I don't want sound biblical teaching. Let somebody fly in or come all in on flying all in and stuff like that. Let's do all this old entertainment up here. I'm serious, church. I'm not putting up. I'm just telling y'all. Don't be, don't be, be twitch. Uh, don't, don't, don't come to be entertained. You want to come for the pure, unadulterated word. The Bible says to the pure, they show themselves pure. Uh, you got to come for the pure word. All that old entertainment, my God, uh, it nullifies and it dilutes the power of God. And more people leave thinking about what you did instead of what you preached. Ah, oh my God. And so they leave away talking about we did this and they did that and they did that. What about Jesus? What did Jesus do? All that old stuff, that's flesh. I know the churches don't like it, so I've been blessed. I know we might not be a thousand. But give me a thousand disciples, though. That's going to make other thousand. They're going to make another thousand. They're going to make another thousand. They're going to make another thousand. I'm going to be okay. I promise you I'm in God's will. I can't get nobody to say nothing about that. Even some of my own members didn't even clap. I, that hurt my heart. Somebody give God a hand. <laughs> I'm just trying to pastor the church, right? Don't be entertained. Don't be entertained. Don't look for the... Don't, that's, why I like, that's why I like the way Wednesday is going. Let everybody rest. Pure worship. Most people is looking for this. Stuff to make them do this. I'm serious, y'all. This is their worship. But, but the thought of doing this, doing worship. The thought of doing this in worship. The thought of doing this in worship. That's too hard. This don't require nothing. This is just flesh. Sensuality. Flesh. It don't require nothing to do that. I can pray to God and do that. That's just external movement. My heart ain't connected. That's just external movement. That's all it is, external. Let me go to church. And they sit here. Why Sharon doing all that? Why Francetta laying all the floor? Why Dominique scream? He didn't stop all that. He's doing all that for attention. People criticize what they don't understand. If you knew a story, you understand why he shouted. It's a different type of work at 205. That's why I'm just taking my time. I ain't putting nothing together, Sharon. Just follow me. Pastor, following God. I won't make the mistakes I made over there. I ain't too quick to add nobody to do nothing. Because the people that I thought was with us wasn't with us. So just take your time. Build and worship. Get ready for the fall. I'm closing. Get ready to train, reproduce yourself, so you can come in and sit down, you get to rest, because so many gifts God is bringing, and it's already placed in the church, so you can be able to sit down and rest. That's the sign of an effective leader, is that you get to instead of have to. That's right. yeah. Pastor Teddy, I thought I'd seen him back there. Pastor Teddy, he might have went outside, but anyway, you know, I got all kinds of people know how to preach the gospel. I get to preach. I ain't got to preach, daughter. Get to pray. I want to be able to throw some cloths over somebody sometime. Let me lay some cloths over somebody. I'm, I'm going to take an offering. Yeah. I'm going to hold an offering bucket, Joseph. William, yeah. you get to. There's only two ways. Let me give you all these last ones. Let's talk about the spirit, and I'm gone. I promise you. We're going out of here. Let's look at the spirit. Point two, the pathway to spiritual delight. One leads to flesh, leads to spiritual disaster. Flesh leads to spiritual disaster. Write that down. Spirit leads to spirit. Flesh leads to spiritual disaster, and the spirit leads to delight. Spiritual delight. Can you write that down? Friends said, look at Pastor Van and say, there's only two ways. Champ, look at Sharon and say, there's only two ways. Dominique, look at my daughter and tell her there's only two ways. Look at your wife, son, and tell her there's only two ways. Look at your soon-to-be wife and tell her there's only two ways. 
Jakari, J and A, look at each other, say there's only two ways. I'm being serious. Shay, look at this sister next to you, say there's only two ways. Oh my gosh, Takita, look at your mom and tell her again, there's only two ways. Stephanie, look at Jackie and, and prophesy and say there's only two ways. Choose this day, which one you're going to be on, church. Cornell, look at Patrice, say there's only two ways. Don't let nobody cause you to get off on the wrong path. Don't let flesh cause you to, my God, prejudge or something. Y'all catch that? Don't let the press call, the flesh cause you to prejudge something before. The Bible says never judge a thing before it's time. Uh, don't make a judgment on the church before it's time. Y'all better listen to me. Some of y'all that's supposed to be with me. Don't make a judgment on the church before it's time. Don't make a judgment on the church before it's time. God is prophesying. God is coming out to them thoughts and them words that's been spoken when we ain't around. Don't make a judgment on this over her before it's time. <laughs> Oh, my God, y'all should have been clapping, too. Come on, y'all give God a hand. <laughs> yeah. Let me get y'all out of here. Let's look at this. Write this down up on the point number two. The Spirit gives us victory. You got victory. Oh, everything I just said, I want you to know this. You got victory. No matter what God said, well, it does matter what God said, but you got victory. Patrice, you got victory. Mitchell, you got victory. Ronnie, you got victory. Mike. Ooh, thank you, go. Uh, Patrice and Ronnie, I'm serious. Look at each other. Yes, yes. Look at each other. Now y'all look at me. Don't ever forget what y'all had to come through to be able to look at each other with respect like y'all just did. Don't forget. I ain't going to never let you forget because I remember what you was like before you got hurt. See, we tend to forget what the church, giving God the glory, has done for our lives. And then we back up on the very thing that God, we back up on the very thing that God yeah. used to deliver you. We stop appreciating the very thing and the very people that God used to deliver you. We lose our commitment and our faithfulness to the very place that God used to get your life back right. See, that's flesh. That's flesh, baby. Oh, my God. People mishandle what they don't respect. Go back and look at the video. It'll be up. The Spirit gives us victory. Let me get you out of this. To walk in the Spirit means to surrender to. To walk in the spirit, you got to surrender to the spirit, y'all. We will be led either by flesh or by the spirit. Whichever one wins depends upon which one we yield to. I'm going to leave that right there. Whichever one wins, flesh or spirit, whichever one you yield to. Whichever one you give in to. So if you're always giving into the flesh, what I want you to do is say, okay, I got to do a little something different. Maybe I need to get a, with a stronger sister, get with one of the pastors in the church. Women with women, though, men with men. Don't, don't be calling under me and telling me, hey, my flesh is weak. I need you to help me. The devil is a liar. <laughs> women with women and men with men. See, y'all laughing, but some of y'all, y'all didn't call the wrong man and you didn't slipped up. Oh, yeah. He just my friend. He said he coming to church. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. <laughs> so. Let me give y'all, let me, let me admonish. If, if, so if I'm struggling, if I'm struggling, I need to find somebody that's, that's free. See, you got to uncover to recover, y'all. And you got to be vulnerable. Let me say this with you. And I say it with conviction and I say it with love. You should never get to the point where you are so concerned about how somebody going to view you to the point to where it paralyzes you and stop you from getting free. And you come into church every week. My God, you come to men's meeting, women's meeting, or whatever, every week. But you know you're not keeping it on the dollar because you're worried about what they think. But you bound. And you want to get free. But you're too people focused. You have been hurt in other places. And you say, if I keep it on a dollar, how they going to look at me? What they going to think about me? Why are you so worried about them? Don't you know when you say, when you confess what you need to confess, it might help them get free. See, you got to already be free when you're trying to get free. You got to already be free in your mind yeah. before you get free. You got to already be free right here because you are free. All you're doing is confessing your freedom. So anytime you're worried about what somebody thinks, welcome to bondage. Okay, y'all heard me. I'm going to leave it alone here. Thank you. So, 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 by God, you got victory, but you need to have victory. Write this down, my, my familiar verbiage over people, places, and things. Uh-oh, add this into there. Y'all don't never hear me say this, Pastor. Write this down. Images. Images is what keeps us in bondage. See, we can't get free because we worry about uh, that image. Every time we try to shake it, every time we try to move forward, every time we tell ourselves I can, my God, uh, that image come. 
which pull you back to guilt and shame. That means you're not free. In your mind. Images are set up in your mind. I'm trying to help you. So you got to take, take control of that image. Some of us cannot move, get, get free because the images is too strong. I'm speaking from experience. I had a, I had, I had a wrong image of me. Uh, my image became what I used to look in the mirror when I weighed 123 pounds. When my jaw sunk in. And I look in the mirror and start crying. My baby then was two and three years. It would be painful, pleasure, painful. I had to deal with that image. But I couldn't recover until I was able to face that image. I want to tell you this, and i got to be honest, and I'm getting ready to close. My God, you can't recover until you face that image. Yeah. The thing you're trying not to, you don't, you, you can't move forward until you deal with that image. Because if you don't deal with it now, when you get hurt and the devil bring it up, then you're going to self-sabotage. Yeah. Look at yourself and deal with your image. The images. That's why that sexual scene and pornography is so rapid and so bad. Because my, most people are delivered from it, but they can't get the images out of their mind. And that's what keep pulling them back. My, you've been delivered, my God, from the world, but the pool of the world keep pulling you back. See what I say? You got to get past. See yourself in the second atom. Get the image of the second atom and get past the first atom. See what I'm trying to say? Get the image of the second atom, and you can't get that image until you start reading the Bible and learn what that image is. He's victorious. You have victory over everything the Spirit of God been talking about. You got victory over it. But you got to get your image right. Greater is he that lives in you. Yes. Fearfully and wonderfully made. You are kings, you're queens, you're beautiful. God loved you enough to die for you. God snatched you out. My God, when the devil tried to kill you, he made death be still. God loved you enough, my God, to be, be, to be beat to death, my God, to be disfigured, my God, for you. Get that image. You're beautiful. I don't care what they say. You're a dying piece. I don't care what they say. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, help the sheep. And this last one. Is that helping anybody so far? The Spirit gives us victory over this life. It gives us victory over our lust, but it gives us victory over our life. Write that down. The Spirit gives us victory over our lust, is what that one was. This is gives us victory over our life. Let me give you this. The flesh produces works of labor. You can't work your way to heaven. Of course, we know that. Write down Proverbs 13, 15. I'm going to leave it alone. The Spirit produces fruit, though. A life of leisure. Fruit is a natural result of abiding in the vine. If you are properly connected to the vine, you can't do nothing but abide. And when you abide, you produce. Every person, my God, that disconnect from the vine, the Bible says, will surely die. In order for the flesh to stay in submission, you got to stay connected to the vine. You got to allow God to do a reversal. Everybody look at me. If the flesh is on top and the spirit is on, up under the flesh, you're out of order. So over the period of time, through process, through making right decisions, through submission, through fasting, through praying, through studying, see what I'm trying to say, through obedience, it shifts. It's, it, it, it starts out, and sometimes even though you're fasting, praying, and studying, it's like I do sometimes, the, the flesh want to get back on time. So I got to go back to war and bring it back. See, the flesh got on me. Why right after I preach the gospel? Depression hit me, daughter. Oh, my God. Everybody talking. I heard you when you got up and said, hold up, hold up, y'all. And that's another thing. When on Sunday, all talking outside the sanctuary, please. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. But depression slowly hit me. And I couldn't shake it. And I had to call my son. I said, man, man. But God spoke to me to put it back on the altar. Put it back on the altar. Thinking about the stuff. Thinking about this. Put it back on the altar. Thinking about the situations. I, I even called my daughter. Text my daughter, didn't you? She said, oh, daddy, you just make it look so easy. I, I'm sorry that you're going through. My daughter! She said, you make it look so easy. I didn't know you were dealing with all that, daddy. My baby said, what can I do? My wife, what can I do? I don't want to add to that. I want to take away from that. 
But that's y'all stuff. Because I feel you in my spirit. I'm concerned about what concerns you. I hurt when you hurt. I feel when you feel. So when y'all hear stuff and see stuff, it hurts. When I glance through social media and see people that I know we didn't bent over backwards for in this church, it hurts. When I see people that I know they got delivered in this ministry, and my God, they need a ministry for whatever reason, don't even come talk to me and my wife, it hurts. This is the people. Only thing that will make you do stuff like that is flesh. So I had to get my flesh back up under my spirit. So now I'm ready to. Don't call that pride. Call that man trying to build himself back up to go back to war. I close with this right here. And it really bought, it really helped me. Reading the book Crushed by T.D. Jakes. Yes. T.D. Jakes said, I was just reading it today. He said, often, I'm paraphrasing, but this is what he said. In 40 plus years of pastor, he said, he would be lying if he told you in them 40 years, he have often, and he probably looking, please look, pull me out. Come on, somebody spot to pull you out. He said, often, he has thought about stepping down from pastor. What, Jakes? T.D. Jakes. Now, I'm not misquoting him because I'm online, so I'm careful. In the book Crushed, in 40 plus years, he said, I thought about it often, Keisha. I'm walking away from the ministry. Bishop said, are you sure? He said, I am. We walk in after prayer. T.D. Jakes is sitting up talking to Jets. Uh, what is the... Uh, no, uh... The other little young kid, uh, Stephen Furtick, Furtick. I'm walking in, coming up out of prayer today. Walking there, he's on. Stop talking about interviewing the, the, the Stephen Furtick that one Kindle that you son us. And uh, first thing I hear him say is, "You can't let your emotions cause you to sabotage your calling." I didn't say nothing to Pastor Champ, but Pastor Champ turned around just looking at it. He caught it. I'm not talking about me, y'all. I am. What have you walked out on because of your emotions? Who and what have you given up on because of your emotions? What people have you let discourage you to the point to where you have stopped pursuing God at the level you once did? You stopped working in the ministry like you once did? You stopped studying like you once did? What has gotten a hold of your emotions like he tried to get a hold of mine? I sure what I sure... Not to bleed, but to help you. If I could preach the way God used me Sunday and then battle the spirit of depression as soon as I get through preaching, that's that war I was talking about. Because the enemy wants me to be ineffective. He wants to silence your daddy's voice. That's why he allowed those that's supposed to be with me to hurt me. But I got to put them back on the altar, daughter. Boy, you look like your daddy, Jackie. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's stand. It's always good to be transparent when you pass to the people, Pastor Champ. Yes, sir. They need to know that you're human like I'm human. They need to know we hurt too, but you got to keep pushing. Because some people are going to leave up out and say, if Pastor went through that, and he's right back up in the pool pit, torment the devil, then I ain't got no excuse. See, that's why I sure what I sure. Because ain't none of you got no excuse. You ain't got no shoe. I could have had anybody preach. I could have had anybody preach. But no, the enemy tried to get me, so I'm going to get him back. <laughs> Look at the mindset. Make your way on down. Let's pray. I'm not going to ask you to, you just come on. You know what you got to come pray about. Give me something soft, man of God. Let's spend a few minutes.